So this is lesson 2-2, two, two, which is standard form of a quadratic function. Our essential question is what key features can you determine about a quadratic function from an equation in standard form? Okay, so standard form we talked a little bit about in the last lesson. It's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So the question is how can you find a vertex of a quadratic function written in standard form? So the x coordinate is going to be, you're going to use the formula negative b over 2a. So, and then to find the y coordinate, you're going to plug the x value that you got into your equation and find the y value. So it's kind of written as your x is negative b over 2a, and then your y is f of negative b over 2a. And sometimes that's confusing to look at written that way, so we're going to do an example here where our a value is 1, our b value is negative 6, and our c value is 10. So first of all, I start out finding the x value, negative b over 2a. So since b in this equation is already negative, a negative negative turns positive, so this will be positive 6 over 2 times my a, which is 1. So this would be 6 divided by 2, so my x-coordinate is 3. Now to find my y-coordinate, I'm going to take f of 3. So that means I'm going to plug 3 everywhere there's an x into my equation. So this would be 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 10. So if I do that, I get 1. So that means that my vertex is 3, 1. So you can see it's not quite as easy as when you're in vertex form, it's easy to find the vertex. When you're in standard form, you have to do a little bit more math, but we can still do it. So then if I wanted to, just to make sure we come back to this, if I want to turn this formula into vertex form, I can write it as y equals, my a is 1, so the a in standard form is the same as the a in vertex form. So this would just be x minus 3 squared plus 1. And you can always double check by foiling it out, simplifying, and see, making sure it equals your standard form. Okay, example 3 says a water balloon was thrown from a window. The height of the water balloon over time can be modeled by the function y equals negative 16x squared plus 160x plus 50. What was the maximum height of the water balloon after it was thrown? So we have a visual here, so we know that this is a maximum. Um, we could estimate based on the graph where um, the height it reaches. We could graph it on Desmos or on our graphing calculator, but we can also, it's always helpful to verify algebraically. So I'm going to use that same, um, so I guess I said I said h in the notes, but I've always known it as x equals negative b over 2a. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you. So in my handwritten notes, I put h equals negative b over 2a because that's what you're trying to find. You're trying to find the hk, the h part of the vertex. Okay, so negative b over 2a is going to be negative 160 divided by 2 times negative 16. And a mistake sometimes people make with this is they try to type it all in their calculator at once, and the order of operations can mess you up there. So this would be 160 divided by negative 32. So I like to simplify all the way there, and then I get 5. So that we can see on our graph here that clearly that is the um, the x-coordinate of our vertex. So at 5 seconds is when the water balloon reaches its maximum height, and then we want to figure out what is that maximum height. So then we take the 5 and we plug it in to find y. So this would be negative 16 times 5 squared plus 160 times 5 plus 50, and we get 450 and that would be in feet. So that'd be 5, 450, so it reaches the maximum height. So the maximum height it reaches is 450 feet. Okay, 
So this last one is taking points and making it into an equation. So the easiest way to do this is to use technology. So I put on the notes, I put both how to do this in Desmos and how to do this in the graphing calculator. Um, I'm going to talk about Desmos just because with our um, distance learning situation, we've done most of our stuff in Desmos, so I think it's good to be consistent that way. If you have a graphing calculator, um, check out the notes and you will see um, you will see the steps and process for how to find it in there. Okay, so we want to know which equation goes through this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a table. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch. Okay. So here I am in Desmos. So if you just type the word table, you'll see it turns it into a table. So that's why I like Desmos because you don't have to remember what, what you're trying to find. You just type it in and it's there. So now I'm going to enter in my numbers that I had. So I had negative 2 and 32. And then I had 1 five and three 17. Okay. So now I enter my values. So in the next line, I want to outline what a quadratic function in standard form would look like. So I'm going to say, why, why one? So I, the reason I'm doing that is you can see on my table up there, it's labeled X one and Y one. So I want to tell my equation where it's pulling the values from. And then I want to find the symbol. Let's see, I don't see it here. Go to functions. Oh no. Let's see. Oh dear, it's the little squiggly symbol and not using my, I can use, I can find it on the computer, but I'm looking, seeing, oh, here it is. Okay. So, okay. This is down here in the alphabet. Okay. So we have Y1 is approximately equal to, and then we're going to put letters in. So we're going to put A and then we're going to do X1 squared. Okay. And then we're going to say, let's go back here to B and then go back and type X one. So again, we're just filling in our, we're trying to match it to our table plus, and then we go back here and we put C. Okay. So now you can see that it matched. Oops. Okay, my graph over here matched those points. And then if you look down at the bottom, it says parameters. So my parameters say that A is three, B is negative six, and C is eight. So what it did is it took our table that we inputted and it found the A, B, and C that fit that um, quadratic regression. Okay, so let's go back here. So that means that my equation for this would be Y equals three X squared minus 6x plus 8. So that's the equation that fits those points. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.